Why do some substances appear to disappear when they're put into water when others do not? Let's answer that. In order to discuss solubility, we're going to need an example. Let's use tea. When a lot of people drink tea, they find it's too bitter to drink. Naturally, they add sugar to sweeten the taste. So if we take our cup of tea and add sugar to it, there's now sugar floating around in the tea. With a little stirring, the sugar seems to disappear. But has the sugar actually disappeared? Well, the answer is no. The sugar is still there, but we can no longer see it. The sugar is said to have been dissolved in the tea. Now, there is some terminology we need to know, but luckily there's not too much. Now, the first component we are dealing with is the sugar, which in this case is referred to as the solute. The second component we are dealing with is the tea itself, which in this case is called the solvent. So the solute is dissolved in the solvent, and the solvent dissolves the solute. Now, there is a third term we need to know, which relates to the tea and sugar system as a whole. And this term is solution, which is the term for the mixture of the solute dissolved in a solvent, the sugar dissolved in the tea, a sugar tea solution. Now, not all substances will dissolve in the same solvent. Take water, for instance. Some substances will dissolve in water, like the sugar or table salt. Others will not, like sand or oil. If sand could dissolve in water, our beaches would be quite a bit smaller. Why, though? Why are the ability for solutes to dissolve in solvents selective? The reason is polarity. Polar molecules will dissolve in polar substances and nonpolar or apolar molecules will dissolve in apolar substances. However, that's a more advanced level of chemistry and will be covered in a separate video. Now we head to the term solubility. Solubility is the measure of the amount of a solute able to dissolve in a solvent, with units of grams per 100 centimeters cubed or grams per 100 milliliters. So to visualize this, for every 100 milliliters of solvent, we can dissolve one gram of solute. So the solute in this case is called soluble. It can dissolve in the solvent. If a substance cannot dissolve at all in a solvent, the solute is said to be insoluble for that particular solvent. Now, the identity of the solute and the solvent will cause different solubilities. As you can see, even by changing just the solute, the solubility of that substance can change dramatically. Now, the solubility of substances are also affected by the temperature of the solvent. When regarding solid solutes, an increase in the temperature of the solvent results in an increase in the solubility of the solute. This can be shown with sodium chloride in water. With each 10 degree increase in temperature, the solubility is increasing by around 0.7 grams per 100 centimeter cubed. So if you've ever noticed a pile of sugar in the bottom of your cup of tea after you've finished drinking it, then you probably made your cup of tea too cold. Gases also need to be accounted for when discussing solubility, as they too can be considered a solute. So, like solids, gases can also be dissolved in solvents. Let's take lemonade. Lemonade is a carbonated drink, meaning there are actual carbon dioxide molecules dissolved in the juice. That's what creates the fizz. The solubility of that CO2 is dependent on pressure. As the pressure of the volume of space above the lemonade increases, so does the solubility of that CO2. So when the lemonade is produced, the bottling process occurs under pressure as to keep as much of the fizz creating CO2 in solution. Also, upon removing the cap and releasing the pressure, naturally, the CO2 comes out of solution as the solubility is decreasing. This creates a surplus of CO2 bubbles emerging from the lemonade, often creating a mess. Now, to explain this, the CO2 particles can be seen to have little space above the solution to move into, or in other words, a high pressure. If we reduce the pressure by increasing the volume of space above the juice, 
the particles will have more space to move into, thus they come out of solution. Like solids, temperature also plays a role in the solubility of gases. However, this time it's reversed. As the temperature of the solvent increases, the solubility of the gas decreases.